So the next is Dieter Egli, who uh, actually came to us, came to New York from uh, laboratories in Boston, where he was working on stem cell related biology. And Dieter is a Robertson professor at the New York Stem Cell Foundation and an adjunct uh, professor at Columbia University. Uh, again, I think representing our effort to tie ourselves closely to our um, sister or brother, whatever institutions in New York City. Dieter is an example of this. Dieter is the individual who performed some of the experiments that I guess now a year ago, a little year and a half ago, were denoted the, by Time Magazine, the scientific breakthrough of the year. And this experiment involved transferring nuclei, the part of the cell that contains the chromosomes, between uh, skin cells and eggs. And for reasons that Dieter will mention to you, this turns out to be and is a very important area of stem cell biology that may ultimately be useful for producing cells, not only that can be studied in ways that reveal the biology, for example, of diabetes, but also ultimately for therapeutic purposes. So in our sort of uh, firmament, Dieter is one of the really world-class stem cell biologists who not only works on areas such as the ones that I mentioned, but helps in terms of spreading this knowledge, making it available to others uh, in our community for the purpose not only of pursuing directly these very basic scientific experiments, but also generating cellular models of diseases such as type 1 um, and type 2 diabetes. So Dieter, would you like to say a little bit more about what you do, or did I say it all? <laughs> Sorry. Almost, 90%. <laughs> so I believe that for a cure of diabetes, we'll ultimately need to learn how to make the cells that are lost during the disease, at least for some forms of diabetes. And that's why I'm working on stem cells, because stem cells, they can make those cells. In the past few years, we have learned how to go from a skin cell to a stem cell and then to an insulin-producing beta cell. And that's extremely fascinating and very motivating because just, I would say, maybe five, six years ago, that seemed like a very distant dream. And now we can do it in the laboratory. It's still a long way to translate these two therapies, I, I think. Uh, but this progress makes me very hopeful that this will be possible. We have also learned that we can correct uh, certain genes in, in those cells if they are mutated and cause deficiencies in the insulin producing beta cells. Um, and when we do those corrections, they become more normal again. We have um, used these now mostly for studies in the laboratory. Uh, we don't really have plans to put this into people yet, but probably we should start talking about it. Um, <clears throat> And we, we also use these cells for, for drug screening and uh, to test therapeutic, potentially therapeutic compounds. There's some rare forms of diabetes that are not so well studied, um, and we also care about those um, because they also, these people, um, some of these people have not uh, very good opportunities because there are few. And in some cases, rare forms of diabetes can be used to better understand the more common forms. And, and so that's basically the spectrum of my studies.